Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is that time of year once again. Ruby Volume 7, for some people, they would say it's quickly approaching. And if you don't know any better and you're like me and you've been up since 7 o'clock this morning looking at all of the news and information that's come out from Ruby from the Verve website to the New York Comic Con interview to the New York Comic Con panel, you would think, and all the information that we've gotten so far, you would think the premiere was tomorrow. Despite the fact that we're still less than a month, um, you know, three to four weeks out before the premiere on November 2nd on the RT website, but... My God, man, before anything, the first thing that I kind of want to address is is welcome back to those of you who are excited and looking forward to another year of Ruby content for me, something that I pride myself on, that I look forward to making year in and year out, the heart of my channel, the love of my life, the series that got me into the Rooster Teeth community that has done so much for me, uh, for my personal life and also for the channel, um, you know, reaching 92,000 subscribers this year has been phenomenal, um, you know, and it's going to be another great year of the, the content that you guys have come to know and expect and love and appreciate from reactions, reviews, live stream discussions, ship posting videos, news and information, and everything else in between. Another year of plot progression, another year of cool fights, another year of, uh, you know, fighting grim and kind of just getting through the plot and accelerating things that have happened over the last six years of this series. And I'm, I'm super excited to hit the ground running. I'm already hitting the ground running since 7 o'clock this morning. Some of you guys have probably seen it. I posted a video talking about um, the still image of Ruby, uh, you know, the Team Ruby characters in their fully rendered models of their Volume 7 outfits. The synopsis of the volume, uh, focusing a lot on trust issues between Ironwood, Atlas, you know, our main characters and everything of the like. A lot of news and information has just recently come out over the last couple of hours from New York Comic Con. I watched both panels and I'm going to be putting together a bunch of information for those of you who kind of want a TLDR of a lot of the announcements that have been had or just want to be informed on things that you may not have been in the loop of for the Ruby series up to now but for this video in particular I did not think this was going to happen I actually was proven wrong because in the video that I put out this morning I said don't expect a trailer at New York Comic Con they don't usually do that they wouldn't give us a trailer and leave us high and dry for a month before the premiere and now I'm eating my own words because they did give us a short mini clip of the trailer and I did post that to the channel to kind of hold people over because I didn't think they would actually give us the full trailer, but here we are. So um, I have only seen that short mini clip. I have not seen the clip entirely. We're going to be going through it for my initial take of my excitement, my hype, my reaction to everything, and then probably watching it maybe two to three times to get some more context. If there's enough there, I might make its own standalone breakdown video uh, for those of you who are interested, but... This is going to be the first look at Ruby Volume 7, the trailer. Um, what we know so far of Volume 7, I think, as of, as of right now, is there's a lot of things going on in the Kingdom of Atlas, especially with Ironwood in particular, the, the events of the Fall of Beacon, everyone pointing their fingers at Atlas, uh, the dust embargoes, the closing of the borders. Um, I think Salem has really gotten into the mind of... Of, of Ironwood, the paranoia and the schizophrenia of, of just not knowing, you know, not knowing who to trust, not knowing who to trust in terms of Ozpin, Crow, or maybe even Ironwood himself, you know, and there's just a lot of questions to be had about the Kingdom of Atlas, the school, the Shini Dust Company, Mantle, you know, the brand of Adam, Faunus Discrimination, um, you know, the plot progression of everything, the relic of creation, getting the relic of knowledge to Atlas, what's going to happen from that, the Spring Maiden, there's so much in store, and I'm also going to be focusing on making a video on my overall thoughts, predictions, speculations, and my own personal wants for the volume, so, you know, because there's a lot riding on this, this Atlas arc, and Atlas in particular, there's a lot of beats that need to be hit, but like I said, for this video, I am so excited, we're getting the first look at Ruby Volume 7 in its entirety, kind of setting the tone for what we can expect. The hype, the excitement, the drama, the fighting, the grim, everything else in between. As always, thank you guys so much for the return. For those of you who are returning for another year of Ruby content, thank you guys so much for those of you who have stuck around. I also just recently finished up Red vs. Blue Season 10, the series that paved the way for Ruby, and it's been such a phenomenal ride so far, getting through with putting the rest of that on the channel over the next couple of days. You know, but this has all kind of led to Ruby Volume 7, the continuation of a fantastic series that I love to death, and uh, I'm very excited to check that out. So without further ado, Ruby Volume 7 trailer. This is going to be my reaction to it. As always, thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for being here. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And without further ado, let us begin. So your boy's really nervous right now. 
Uh, I have no idea what to expect, and it's a minute and a half long, so uh, let's see if I can make it through this. Uh, I'm probably going to rewatch this a couple of times, because as per any first time watching of anything new for me for Ruby, I kind of lose my shit the first time around, and I miss out on a lot of things, so I kind of want to be as perceptive and get all of my excitement out the first run, and then kind of perceive and analyze and break down, and hopefully if there's enough things to kind of add on to the conversation, I'll make a separate breakdown video of kind of giving my thoughts and theories based on what this trailer can tell us of the volume as a whole. But with all that said, thank you guys so much. I am so nervous. It's not even funny. Okay. Oh boy. <sighs> all right, Ruby, volume seven trailer. We're gonna be starting this in three, two, one, now. Many of us are these as uncertain times. Oh my gosh, Ironwood! I'm okay, these are- to do what I think is best. Oh, this is a whole new dialogue! Tell if what's best is what's right. <laughs> Ooh, this, this is exactly after volume six. This whole city, it just seems awful. Oh, mantle! We do. Well, we didn't come this far to feel Oh bad. my god, this looks so good! The Sentinel now, Grim! I believed it was impossible to <laughs> truly turn the tide against Sabian. This is from the first episode! They showed this in we RTX! In the position of needing <laughs> oh! approach. This warp strike, the new Shoot. outfits for Keep Team Juniper! Stronger and stronger. Unless we destroy her. Oh, that beard! Holy shit, Ironwood! All right, and this was the snippet that we saw. Dude, Mantle looks so good! The guy scrim! It was like a dust gigas. <laughs> Let's go! I'm honestly expecting things to go a lot better. <laughs> Oh shit! What the hell? Oh no! Who? Thank you so much for checking out the Volume Seven trailer. <laughs> you can keep the hype train going. You can check out the Ruby Complete movie. Oh or if maybe you want to switch things up, watch all of Cam Cam Season Three. You can check out the playlist in the description. <laughs> oh my gosh, Miles and Carrie, you guys hype me! And oh. it would make us ever so happy if you dang that bell. I just want to be happy. Oh man! Holy crap, dude! That was so much at once. Best, but so so the events are happening right after the they already mentioned like volume seven takes place immediately after volume six ends mantle looks so good what they showed us at rtx was like trash compared to what that looked like like they literally showed us a work in progress of a work in progress of a play blast of the first episode um and, and that was it, like that whole sequence was what I saw when I was at RTX. But okay, okay, this is Ironwood seemingly talking to the group. This dude has a full fucking beard! To do what I think is All right, hold on. Many have described these as uncertain times. Uncertain times. I'm trying to do what I think is best, <laughs> but I really can't tell if what's best is what's right. <sighs> this isn't right. Mantle looks so this good! It just seems awful. So, what do we do? Well, we didn't come this far to fail now. The Sentinels, now, the, the Centipede. It's impossible to truly turn the tide against Satan. You, you can't think like that, Ironwood. Find you're... ourselves in a position of needing a new approach. <laughs> she will keep returning stronger and stronger unless we destroy her. You unless can't. Can help. Bro. Bro, victory is in a simple soul. There will be no victory in strength. He's thinking just like, just like Raven. It's what Tai Yang said. You think that the only way through a fight, uh, uh, the only way is through something, that strength is all that matters. He's like, the only way we can win is by killing her. No, she has to learn. Dude. It's going to get to the point where Ironwood's going to be like, no, we have to destroy her with all of our might. And he's not learning from the mistakes of the fall of Beacon. The reason why the fall of Beacon happened was partially due to the fact that you wanted to flex on your entire military strength. And that bit you in the ass because they played you like a fiddle, dude. And he's just, I can't even imagine what that guy's thinking. Right. He's just so paranoid. He just wants to go in and just awful. destroy. So what do we do? That's gonna come back to bite you, dude. Dude, the lighting of Mantle Until looks now, so good. It was impossible to truly turn the tide against Satan. 
Unless he has something with the relic of creation? Dude. <laughs> the new Juniper outfit. Dude, the guys, that looks like dust crystals. Oh my god. If I know anything, that beard just means that Ironwood's more stressed than he's showing. Wow. New Grim. The return of the Geist Grim. That's so sick. God. I cannot wait. So this was the snippet that we had seen earlier. And then everyone gets apprehended. expecting things to go a lot. What happened right here? Someone literally just ran up on them specifically and took the relic. Checking out the volume. So I'm wondering if like Tyrion or like I wonder if someone inside of Salem's group got like hired some goons to like get that for them. Or maybe they just saw something shiny when they're like, yo, that's a come up. We'll take it. We're scavengers anyway. We're like living in the freaking slums and we need what we can get to get by. Holy crap, bro. Ironwood. Ironwood's gonna be his own worst enemy this volume. I said that in the video that I uploaded earlier today about the synopsis of, of volume seven, right? The whole idea of this volume is we're not gonna know who we can trust. Cinder kind of took direct shots at Ironwood at the end of the, uh, you know, towards the, the end of the Vital Festival tournament when things were going to shit and she kind of called it out, you know, she kind of called it as is. She was like, this man owns the military and owns the school. He flexes all of this power in the name of peace. And then when it comes time to like pay the piper, he doesn't want to be the one that's, you know, he, you know what I mean? He kind of advocates for peace and stuff like that when he's kind of flexing his military might. And now he's saying, you know, this whole time, I thought that there was no way that we can truly get the hand of Salem. But now I think we just need to use all of our strength to destroy her. And that is like the complete opposite. And you're playing right into her hand. And I think he's so tunnel visioned that eventually people like Crow and people like Ozpin and people like Ruby are going to be like, hey, maybe you should do it this way. But because Ironwood never got his way in Beacon, right? Ozpin had kind of pulled rank there. Now it's we're in his ballpark. We're in his, in his kingdom, quite literally. And I think he's just going to be on a major power trip on top of the stress of keeping the citizen safe, on top of the stress that if shit goes down in his own backyard, it's going to be on him. The lives are going to be on him. The damage is going to be on him. And I don't know, man. Holy shit, dude. Oh my God. Yo, I, I can't stress enough. I can't stress enough how good this scenery looks. We didn't see any of this shit at RTX. None of these buildings were even buildings. They were like blocks. And the lighting, the neon lights, and God, neon cat, dude, I hope we get to see Team Funky again. I hope we get to see a lot of familiar faces. Ciel Soleil, Penny's father, the remnants of Penny, what ended up happening? Did they ever kind of go back into creating a Penny 2.0 or resuscitating what was left of the original? You know what I mean? Like there's so many, uh, there's so many awful. things I want to know. So the slums, look at these well, people. They're come this far to fail now. Shit. Until now. So we have these Grim who are, they, they, uh, at the panel, they said that these Grim are called Sentinels. And they're basically, they're kind of like ancient, like bugs, like fossil bugs, um, because the Grim of this arc or of this terrain of Atlas are prehistoric. So we have the Sabertooth Grim, and now we have the Centipede, like giant Centipede Grim, um, which are basically kind of like ancient, I think it's like Cephalopods or, or something like that. So these Grim look pretty dope too. The Geist Grim are making a return, so it's cool to see that Geist Grim are around. This Geist Grim that we're about to see though, looks like he's encased in dust. No, I believe it was impossible to- Is that even possible? Look at these Grim, dude! Woo! This entire sequence is so movie. sick. Oscar makes a play too. It looks so awesome. Nora's outfit. Look at this shit. Who the hell is that? And that! New characters! Dude, they're in the mines! There's like dust all over the place. Holy shit, I didn't, like, yo, dude, I'm like fucking missing out on all this shit. Two new characters, Team Ruby, in the mines of Mantle, most likely. Fighting a Geist who has possessed dust crystals. Holy shit, and what looks like a freaking, a girder, 
on, on his left arm there. Strong, wow. Stronger. So Less creative on the guy. Look at this man. Look at this fucking guy. He's like the definition of stress. The definition of like, I'm fucking... I don't even shave because I'm so stressed. I'm so worried about other stuff that my face is the last thing I care about. This man had like five o'clock shadow in volume four. Haven't seen the dude in two volumes. And now look at him. Just the way that he's talking. I really feel like he's gonna... I don't know, man. I don't want to say Ironwood would die. It would be such a tragedy to lose someone like this. He He's just trying to do what's best. And he's just scared. And then that's, you know, and then that fear turns into insecurity and you don't want to let your, you know, your weaker side show, especially to people that you're trying to be, you know, trying to be strong for. So then that insecurity turns into resentment and then that in turn pushes everybody away and then Salem fucking wins. And then Salem wins. I really hope, I really hope nothing happens to James. You know, he was already butting heads with Crow in Volume 3. Ozpin and him weren't seeing eye to eye during the Ves Vital Festival tournament. He has the Relic of Creation. He has the Schnee Dust Company. He has his military might. But if he lets that shit go to his head, if he lets that go to his head, there will be no victory in strength. And if he doesn't learn that, it's going to be his downfall. I need to see this one more time. Holy shit, this is such a good trailer. Many have described these as uncertain. And it's on top of that, it's Ironwood narrating it. To do it's what I think the, th the theme is right I there. It's all about Ironwood right. trusting people. This isn't right. This whole city. Mantle, man. This place looks like. So what we looks do? like shit. Well, we didn't come this far to fail now. <laughs> I can't Until wait, now, dude! It was impossible it's so to crazy to think that all the shit saying. we got, we still gotta wait a month. Wow, this we is so sick! <laughs> this looks so I good from what we saw at RTX. She will keep <laughs> returning stronger and stronger. She will keep returning. Tell us how we can help. No, dude. You can't destroy Salem. But you don't know that, of course. God, these freaking outfits look so awesome. Some of the Team Juniper ones I have to get used to. Like, Jean's outfit change, like, he's been memed to hell and back. I feel so bad. But his is the one that I have to get used to the most. And then this right here, like, what the hell? They're using, like, freaking gravity cuffs. And they're just like, yo, let me just yoink that off of you real quick. Thank you so much for checking out the Volume 7 wow. trailer. There is so much there to talk about. I actually might do a breakdown video. I think a breakdown video would be really good because there's so much cutting and like panning away that there's so much that I can't just get out in one take. I, you know, I'm constantly replaying it and stuff like that. Holy shit. Us, uh, Ironwood has to trust people. He needs to trust and understand that there's more than one way to win a fight. You can't be like Raven. You can't think that just shooting all of your missiles and stuff is good. Like Salem's immortal. She cannot die unless Ozpin didn't tell him everything because Crow didn't know everything. You know what I mean? Crow decked Ozpin in the face. Crow's Oz's right hand man. So if, uh, if, 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 if Ironwood's in the dark about the truth, the true nature of Salem, he needs to be informed of that. And that mindset of his needs to change. Otherwise things are going to go bad for his kingdom. And things might even go bad for him if he feels the need to go up one-on-one -on -one with Salem. Because it looks like Salem and her goons of freaking flying gorillas are on their way to Atlas. And if he comes if he comes face to face with her, I, I really feel like if a character is to die, it might be Ironwood. And I don't say that because I want to. I say that because practically right here, it, it's just his weaknesses are, are going to be his downfall, unfortunately. Holy shit, November 2nd, 13 chapter volume this year for volume 7. Uh, very excited to see how everything kind of comes together this year. Um, a lot of that choreographed stuff, a lot of the stuff that was shown in the mantle area, we did see, or attendees of RTX 2019 saw those. So a lot of that early stuff I managed to see at RTX. It wasn't as polished as that, so I'm really impressed 
with a lot of the the leaps and bounds that they've made since RTX. But uh, super excited to see everything. I'm gonna be watching this again, and uh, you know, if I extrapolate enough, or if you guys let me know in the comments, let me know if you guys want me to do a breakdown of this to kind of form, like, just form my thoughts a little bit more. Uh, I, I guess put my thoughts in a, in, in a way that kind of comes off a lot better of understanding instead of it being craziness and stuff all over the place. But yeah, really liked the trailer. Leaves a lot to be expected and to look forward to. Trust is the theme this year. And uh, I feel like the flags are already up for Ironwood as of right now and his habitual behaviors and just his line of thinking again with the dust embargo and, and following that up with, with the closing of the borders and just how volume three as a whole ended being, you know, having the fingers all pointed to him. It, it can't be, it can't be easy, especially since he holds two seats on the council as the military, um, you know, the, you know, the, the leader of the military and the leader of, of the academy. But all of that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I, I need to know what you guys thought about this trailer in the comments. Everything in between from the action to the dialogue to what you guys are expecting for this volume in particular. I'm going to have a lot of things coming out between now and the premiere of Ruby, so you guys can look forward to that. It's great to be back. I'm super excited. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.